Hello and welcome back to another YouTube video, probably the last one of this year. I'm going to be talking about what most people will probably be talking about around this time, which is reading goals for 2024. So without further ado, let's get started. So 2023 was a very uh, eventful and pr pretty fun year for myself with respect to reading. Uh, on my Goodreads account, which uh, you will see on the uh, description below and probably the first pinned comment, I read uh, about 92 books uh, out of my goal of 75. And I read, I think it was about 30,000 pages worth of books and uh i mean this year i read several literary giants i've read uh, war and peace k brothers ken resolve um i read top five of dostoevsky which i'm gonna be making a short about that very soon um and i've read i mean everything from brandon sanderson to i mean books in the bible so it's very a very eventful year and uh, so for this video which will probably be but on the shorter side, I'm just wanting to talk about my reading goals for 2024 and the reading goals I'd like to uh, encourage you, dear viewer, to uh, pick, up, pick up and uh, to differ upon. So without further ado, I want to get into my goal. So my reading goal for 2024 is, well, to be more well-read. And that I think that's the goal that every reader has fundamentally is they want to read more, they want to know more, they want to have a better reading year than they did the previous year. And so for me, that entails really kind of being a bit of a jack of all trades when it comes to reading. So, I mean, I'll be reading history, I'll be reading in foreign languages, I'll be reading philosophy and, and literature and fantasy and things like that. So my book goal is to read about a hundred books next year because my life goal has been to at least read a thousand books. I think that's very attainable. And I think that would be attainable for you, Dubira, as well. On this preliminary reading list, we have books such as Middlemarch by George Eliot. We have Ulysses, which I'm currently in the process of reading right now uh, because I challenged a friend to read that. We have Moby Dick and Don Quixote, um, Anne of Green Gables, uh, Little Women, Divine, The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Great, Great Expectations and David Copperfield, Oliver Twist. Um, and the first volume of Proust's Salut de Chasse du Temps Perdu. In terms of philosophy, uh, well, I'm going to try to read all of Plato's complete works. I've read The Republic and The Symposium. I took an ancient wow. Greek... Sorry about that, my dog bark. Um, I took an ancient Greek philosophy class, which is part of my degree. I have to take one. And so we read a lot of the ancients, and that was quite fun. I also plan on reading some of uh, more of Aristotle's works, um, reading some Bertrand Russell, probably trying to read a couple more volumes of Cobbleson's History of Philosophy, as well as reading the book that's called uh, Hegel's Phenomenology of the Spirit, which that one will be eventful. Um, so what is the purpose of me wanting to do this? Well, I mean, other than being well read, I, I find that reading difficult books and reading fun books uh, enables one to uh, to utilize a certain part of the brain, a certain part that we don't often use when we read easy books or uh, or fun books necessarily. Uh, I'm not saying that you know reading isn't always. I'm not saying that reading easy books isn't uh, cognitively challenging. Rather, what I'm saying is that reading big books like Ulysses takes a certain part of your of your mind to really get through something like that. Whereas getting through maybe Pride and Prejudice or the Mistborn series might not take that that intensive uh, scrutiny uh, that Ulysses would take. I also don't, I mean, this isn't just the full list. This is just some of the books I'd like to read. Uh, ideally, I'm also going to try to read the Stormlight Archive by uh, Brandon Sanderson because I, I enjoyed the Mistborn series. I finished the trilogy. I think I finished book three, two, two days ago, two, three days ago. Very, very well written. I was I was very impressed with the, uh, with, the, with the twist at the end. And I read people's remarks on that and I was a bit perturbed by it, but maybe I'll make a video on that myself. With respect to philosophy, I mean, philosophy is always a cognitively challenging area to read, and it's one that I enjoy reading. I mean, I'm a philosophy major, that's kind of what I do. But also just reading books like that, it gives you a sense of, I guess, perspectivism when it comes to other people and how they grew up, different times and such. Because a lot of people nowadays aren't necessarily familiar with how the world and how thought has been shaped. And to me, that's a bit bit concerning because we all think that we just somehow arrived at reason and rationalism and so, so things like that when we really didn't. It took thousands of years to get to, get to that stuff. Anyway, aside from that point, what is my, what is my uh, sort of syllabus for next year with respect to my reading goals? Well, this is my challenge for you, my dear subscribers, and really for myself as well. And it is to read one ancient philosophy book that could be anything. It could be the Hindus, it can be the Greeks, it could be the Romans, it can be pre-Socratics, it doesn't really matter. It can be anything like that. 
I mean, for example, you could read the, you can read Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. You could read Plato's Republic. You could read the Bhagavad Gita. You could read. I mean, the the, the list is endless, really. Um, you could read. Uh, I also encourage you to read a contemporary literature book, and that can be from really anywhere. Uh, it can be, you know, uh, Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshi Kazu Kawaguchi. It could be um, maybe Cormac McCarthy, or it could be something like fourth wing which i mean i wasn't personally i personally won't be reading that but i mean if you want to read something like that it's contemporary uh i also encourage you to read a book from world literature and this could be like the russians like tolstoy dostoevsky pushkin it could be the germans it could be the french it could be the japanese the chinese it could be any anywhere in world literature i encourage you to do that because Reading world literature gives you a better sense of idea and understanding from yourself. Where I mean, depending on where you are in the world, if you're, say, if you're from what my demographics show me, if you're from India, you know, maybe read something from Japan or maybe read something from Russia or America. Uh, if you're an American, read something from England or Russia or China or Japan, India. I mean, the, the amount is limitless, so to speak. I also encourage you to read uh, a history book. For me, I'll be reading The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, um, personally, because I find the rise of political systems and the fall of them very interesting because it shows us how uh, history repeats itself and how human psychology works. And you can really understand how people can fall into the systems quite easily by understanding how it rises and how it falls. I also encourage you to read a political book. Now, you know, if you're a conservative, read maybe something like the Communist Manifesto. If you're a uh, liberal or a communist or whatnot, read something a bit more on the conservative line. I mean, I'm not saying you have to, but I would encourage that because part of having freedom and having the uh, benefit of free thought, the freedom of exchange of ideas, is the uh, ability to sort of read and discuss things that you disagree with. And often, more often than not, it's better to read things that you disagree with and understand them than just to be so rooted in what you believe. Uh, I also encourage you to read a classic. This can be anything. Could be, I mean, by classics, I really mean like what we define as a classic. So like Dickens, uh, Victor Hugo, Miguel, uh, Miguel de Cervantes, um, could be Tolstoy. The odds are limitless. I also encourage you to read five poems. This can be poems from anywhere. It could be haikus, it could be contemporary poetry. It could be the Romantics, it could be John Keats, it could be whatever. And three short stories. Now, three short stories is really quite quite easy. It's not really that uh, not difficult to uh, to read. For me, I'm going to be reading Jean Louis Bourges and a bit more of Chekhov because they're the really the two short story masters. And uh, as a writer, uh, I'm going to be challenging myself to do a few things there, uh, namely to write a short story every week and to write a poem every day because I want to, uh, I really want to buckle down on that. Finally, I also want you to read an author that you are interested in. Now, this could be someone who's on your TBR. It could be someone that maybe a friend has recommended or maybe you just saw online, you know, maybe like for my mother, she's interested in Brandon Sanderson, mainly because she saw that Tress of the Emerald Sea was very good and that people recommended it. So she's like, hmm, maybe I'll read it. And I encourage you to, to do that because that, that opens up a whole new avenue for you, a whole new genre sometimes a whole new worldview and that can be very encouraging now for me as a writer my my big goal right now is to uh, finish really writing my novel and getting it published next year which is why i'm wanting to develop that consistency in writing so that way i can really start uh making my way through the world as a writer and an author published author that would be quite fun so with that being said i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope that you will endeavor to uh have some sort of reading goal. What is your reading goal for next year? How many books do you plan on reading? If you have link, if you have a good reads, be sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll be sure to add you on my good reads. And I hope to see you guys very, very soon. And I will see you guys next year.